This video may change the way you think about inflation. You'll learn when inflation does not matter and why that's the case. And in the end, you'll find a somewhat extreme solution where you're immune to inflation. So without further delay, let me share what I learned about inflation this week. Inflation is defined as the decrease in the purchasing power of money over time, meaning your money buys you less stuff as things become expensive. Inflation is actually an index known as the Consumer Price Index, which is based on a representative basket of goods and services which the average consumer would buy. That basket includes bread, milk, eggs, etc. So right there you can see that your inflation rate is probably different than the broad inflation rate you see quoted, because you don't necessarily buy those things. But what about money? What do we mean when we say it loses its purchasing power? Money is a medium of exchange, meaning that's what's used to buy and sell goods and services between two parties. It's kind of an exchange rate. Let's take a simple example to illustrate this. Let's say person A has a bunch of apples costing one pound and person B has a bunch of bananas which cost one pound. They both want what the other person has, so in this case it doesn't matter what inflation is because they can simply swap items. Or if they decide to use money as a medium of exchange and inflation is 10%, then A pays £1.10 to B for his bananas and B pays £1.10 back to A for his apples. Again, it does not make a difference. But imagine A didn't have apples but a £1 wage instead and that wage did not go up with inflation, then he wouldn't be able to buy bananas anymore. Therefore, inflation isn't really a problem if everything is adjusted accordingly and everyone would be happy. But in reality, they usually are not because of competitive pressure. For example, businesses can't always pass on the cost to customers because they may lose market share to their competitors who keep their prices the same. Similarly, employees may not feel comfortable asking for a raise, especially during high unemployment rates. So in practice, this is what leaves some people behind while others remain unaffected. What that means is that if you have an annual salary of 30k and inflation is 5%, the purchasing power of your salary will fall unless you also increase your salary by 5%. We're ignoring taxes here for simplicity as that adds another layer of complexity. But what if your employment contracts specifically mention automatic inflation adjustments? Then you wouldn't worry because your purchasing power would remain unchanged. This is where inflation linking comes into play to compensate for any inflation changes such as inflation index bonds or inflation adjusted annuities or state pensions, which I recently covered. Speaking of which, I wanted to mention that a few comments pointed out that I did not include inflation in the calculation. However, I wanted to explain why it does not matter here, because we're talking about inflation adjusted incomes. You can work with two kinds of values, inflated values or deflated values, also known as nominal and real values. But for comparison purposes, it does not matter which approach you use as long as you're consistent in the approach. On most occasions, however, you will need to account for inflation. Take the case for the never-ending debate on buying versus renting. There are many factors to consider when determining the best option. Some of these factors include the appreciation rate of the property, the interest rate on the mortgage, the costs associated with buying and selling the property, the running costs and savings of owning a property, example saving on rent but incurring maintenance and repairs, or the opportunity cost of buying the property, for example investing that money instead. Depending on your assumptions for these, the calculations will tell you which one is better. So in this case, based on those assumptions, renting is better. But here, it's a big mistake not to include inflation, because when you do include inflation, the conclusion flips, that is, it's better to buy. In this case, that's because the rent increases are more than the maintenance costs increases. So you save more from not renting, and that is enough to change the conclusion in this case. 
There is another case where inflation does not matter. Remember, inflation is the fall in the purchasing power of money, which means that any asset that you own should hopefully go up in price by at least the inflation rate so that you don't lose out when you sell it off. But that's it when you sell it. What if you never intend to sell? In that case, the monetary value is irrelevant. Imagine if you fully own your forever home. Then you wouldn't really care about inflation affecting your housing needs. Of course, I'm ignoring repairs and maintenance here or running costs, but strictly from a renting perspective, you wouldn't worry about rising rents because of inflation here. But this got me thinking, what if we were as self-sufficient as possible? We wouldn't really be affected by inflation, would we? Let's entertain this idea for a minute. Let's say you bought a super efficient house with solar panel, heat pumps for hot water, an electric vehicle and even grew your own vegetables in the back garden. Then if the electricity price rose, you wouldn't really worry. If the price of petrol or diesel went up, you wouldn't really worry. If the price of food went up, well, you might worry a little because it's kind of hard to grow everything you need to eat. But at least you'd worry less. However, this may not necessarily make the most financial sense or be practical because it might be cheaper to just do the normal stuff. But what you get in return is proper long-term overall independence, not just short-term financial independence. Long-term versus short-term thinking is crucial when thinking about your finances. For example, if there's a recession happening and you're lucky enough to have money set aside to invest, how often should you invest? Weekly, monthly or quarterly? Watch this video to find out. Thank you for watching and see you next time.